Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. I am Yamesh Gupta. Today we are going to talk about a programming question. Basically an interview question asked in SE1 and SE2 interviews. So the question here is a DP nested array flat interview question. So this question a lot of people don't like to ask this question and a lot of people do ask this question. So my approach in this question would be that we will go beyond the normal programming part of it. We'll discuss that uh, where at which points in this question it the conversation can branch out into different topics of core JavaScript like uh, prototypical inheritance, closures, arrow functions and how these concepts tie to this questions and how in our maybe real world programming you might say these concepts tie back. So it will be sort of a holistic discussion uh, while talking about the question. So let's see what's the question here it is. So the problem statement is given a deeply nested array, create a function on the array, namely flatten, that when invoked returns a flat version of the original array. Function should be defined in a way that it can be invoked on existing and future arrays. So that basically means that we are provided this input array where we have can have numeric values as elements or array or arrays of arrays and so on. And on this array, there should be a flatten method, which when we call should return a new array, which is the flat version where all the elements are siblings. So as simple as that. So without further ado, let's move on to the implementation part. So for start, let's have a look at this line. Function should be defined in a way that it can be invoked on existing and future arrays. What does that mean? So we have this array input. Let's copy it here. We have this array. On in this array, we can access the flatten method. We'll define this uh, function later. For now, uh, let's understand that on this array, we can access this method. Now it says that it can be invoked on existing and future arrays. So this input is a future array, which or maybe the array which we just defined. But in our code base, we might have some predefined uh, arrays, let's say themes. And on that themes array, we should also be able to access this method. And using this, we can get a flat version. And it should hold true for all the array instances. So the point here is that where and how should you define this method so that all the instances of array should have access to this. I guess you must have guessed it by now that uh, interviewer wants to understand your knowledge and understanding of the prototype chain. Of this prototype chain so they, they can you know steer the conversation in a way then they'll ask you that how uh, this prototype chain works, how inheritance work, and uh, like what is the linkage between the uh, created instances and the prototype and the constructor, and uh, you know uh, how this uh, instance will have access to those methods. So the the interview can move in that direction also. This this is one of the subtopics which can you know branch out from this question. So we have defined the method on the arrays prototype and talked about how the conversation can go into that direction. Now let's define this uh, flatten method and see how more question can arise from that. So we define a function flatten. Now the first thing the interviewer can ask is that how will you access the input function in this flatten method? You cannot say that uh, where uh, ARR is equal to input or something or you don't have the function uh, declaration where you are taking input as the parameter no so you have and because you cannot use input because it can be themes or anything so what is the how will you access the array inside this function so that comes from this this keyword because if you see it is called calling in the context of input. So this will refer to input. This is the calling object. So if you do console log this, then let's run this node array flat and you will see that this inside the flatten function refers to our array. Okay, but now the question arises that 
the interview can move into a direction that they can ask you that apa can you do something like this that we rather than doing a flat function keyword we we define it as an arrow function can we use an arrow function here so using this arrow function will that this inside the function will be same so let's check it out no it's an empty object this is not the same this <clears throat> and we can check it by input it is false but in this question if you do strict equality check it is true so you cannot use uh, arrow function in this because they don't have their own uh, this they will use the definition scope they will not use the calling scope so if there in any function where you want to use this inside the function uh, in the calling context then never use arrow functions so we talked about how we can define this flatten method on arrays prototype and all the instances will have access to it we also talked about how we'll access this input array inside this flatten method now let's take a look at the implementation so if we have to define some sort of uh, you know rough algo for this what we are going to do here is basically we'll loop over the array but that means we'll go to 0.arr.length where arr is the array and if the current element is an array then uh, do some processing maybe else use the current element directly i know it sounds a bit vague that uh, what does this do some processing or current use the current element directly but we'll translate it to code and it will become more clear first of all we'll define a new a new variable output which would be an array this is the final output which will contain all the elements of the original array the flat version basically and will return it then we'll define a function processing processing this will take the arr input which we talked about here and uh, in this we'll loop over the current array so for looping we'll do let i equal to 0 i less than arr dot length and i plus plus so this is the loop here in this loop we'll define the current element which would be arr dot i now we have to check if the current element is an array where which we defined which we talked about here so we'll use this utility arr dot is array current element if it is an array the element at hand is an array then we'll call our processing function again and we'll pass the current element if not then we'll push the current element inside the output array which we created here above okay so let's take a example here so our input is 1 comma 2 comma 3 uh, we'll have three elements where two are numeric values and one is a uh, array so when we run this processing function with this input array as the parameter so at the zeroth index we'll have the value 1 so our else condition will kick in so our output array would be 1 same for the when index is 1 and the value is 2 our output array would be 1 comma 2 because else condition will kick in now in when index is 2 and the value is an array which contains the numeric value 3 in this case what happens here is that our if condition will kick in array is array this condition will hold true and our processing function will be called with the current element as the parameter so our processing function will be called 3 and in this case it will again go from 0 to length to so 0 to length and 
in that case three will be the only element to be processed and every iteration of this function will have access to the output array defined above so we'll push it one comma two comma three and this will be the final output array uh, because after it is pushed our the function which will be called the recursive function will exit the uh, stack and uh, the all the execution stack will be empty and uh, our uh, output function will be output array would be this and it will be returned here now in this case the you know interviewer can also branch out uh, in a way that they can ask about that how this output uh, uh, variable is accessible in every iteration so you know the concept of closures that you can access uh, uh, variables defined in the outer scope uh, so that concept can be asked there and the uh, interviewer can move into that direction. So this is ag again the one of the subtopics we talked earlier, which can uh, branch out from this question. So now what we have to do is that we have to call this processing function. And when we will make the initial first call, we have to provide the initial input array. And we saw that we can access that using this. So using this now if we run this flat array flat see this is the output here so one comma two comma three four five six and this is the output here so let's go over it again what we did here is that basically we def we defined a output array and which we are returning this is the final output array in this we define the processing function which takes the input array and in this we'll loop over from zero till length of the array and if the current element which is in this example like one two three if it is on a uh, non-array basically then we'll push it in the our uh, uh, variable which is accessed by closure we'll push it into that if not uh, if it's an array then we'll recursively make that call and uh, process that array till we find uh, wow, we'll go to the primitive value so basically whenever we encounter primitive value we'll push else we'll uh, process the that element so we implemented our uh, code uh, our solution in it the, this is like the top of the mind solution i have but uh, i've seen some really interesting solution to this problem or <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll show you one so we did all the recursion call and everything and uh, collating them in an output uh, variable and returning it so let's say we define flat flat it let's call it flat it and uh, in this we what we do here is let's comment this out we'll do array dot prototype dot flat it and uh, we'll define it well, let's what do is flat it okay now we have already seen that uh, we can access the array using this so what we do here is that we'll call let's see let for example let's do this like on the array if i call this dot to string let's see what is the output here no dot array flat so it is returning the entire array which is the above nested array as a string so basically what happens is that on any array when you call a to string then it retreats over the entire array and returns the string representation it concatenates all the elements and it Rick uh, goes as deep as the array is. So what we can do here is we can call this dot to string. This will, as we have seen, this will return us a string. We'll split it over comma. Then we'll map where each element. So basically we'll convert the entire array into a string which will concatenate into a long string uh, joined by a comma then we'll split it on the comma and we'll map over it and we'll typecast every string element into an array so 
if we run this now see the same output as above without doing actually anything so i i rec don't recommend this uh, uh, solution but it's kind of clever to do this so we talked about two solutions in which uh, we looped over the array or use the you know uh, inbuilt functions to present a solution we talked about different branches and different topics where this question can lead to like uh, prototype inheritance closures or you know uh, arrow functions where to use them and where not to use them and so on also uh, what else what can this question lead to or what other topics the interview can ask so a follow up question to these uh, this interview question would be let's say in our implementation we went till the infinite depth and we returned the completely flat version uh, where all the elements of the original array were siblings now interview can ask you that this flatten method will take a parameter let's say depth and tell the depth you have to return the flat version let's say this 4 is level 1 depth 1 uh this 7 is depth 2 this 9 is depth 3 and uh, as per the parameter you have to uh, provide the flat version of the array okay so this can be a good follow up question which you can try on your own and do post your solutions in the comments now in our solution we uh returned a new array with the, all the elements uh, as the siblings a complete completely new array now interview can ask you that is it possible to mutate the original array and return that uh, rather than creating a new array is it even possible if yes then what would be the approach and how will you do with that so that is also a good uh, follow up question to try uh in my last question uh, i implemented dom api sort of mock toes and created an abstractions over that and a lot of people reached out and they shared their versions or tried my versions uh, really happy to see that response looking forward to the same response uh, for this particular question also but do the solution i implemented was like top of my mind uh, looking forward to your solutions your suggestions and comments so this brings ends to this video i hope you liked my solutions uh if you feel that i missed out somewhere or you can present an altogether different solution improve upon my solution maybe a faster algorithm less memory consumption and so on then please do share in the comments do uh present your views on our videos and also please do like share and subscribe so that we can bring such uh, good content to you and help each other in the community thank you have a nice day bye bye